Okay. Hi, uh, we're gonna. Hey, Julian, how are you going? Fine, and you? Yeah, good, good. All right. Okay, let's get going. So, um, yeah. So next up, we have uh, Julian Cabies <clears throat> uh, from Oslandia in France, and uh, he's uh, he's an active contributor to the QGIS project for the last several years. And today he's going to talk about his work with um, uh, cloud optimized geotiffs and QGIS. So. Um, over to you, Julien. Yes, let's go. Okay, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, my name is Julien Cabies, and like uh, John said, I work at Auslandia. So I wanted to talk to you about the cloud optimized uh, GeoTIF. Um, and so the COG cloud optimized GeoTIF is a, a raster file format. And it's uh, optimized for uh, object cloud storage. So I'm going to describe uh, what's beyond the hood uh, and how it works uh, a little bit. And I will make a quick uh, demonstration with QGIS how to read a, a COG file into QGIS open and read file into QGIS. So what is COG exactly? Well, it's, um, it's uh, like I said, it's a raster file format and it's tiled like you maybe already know like a TMS and uh, it's only one file but the inner structure of the file is tiled. It uh, supports overviews so you can have a different uh, resolution um, and uh, in order to have a quick access and quick speed visualization of your file at different resolution. Uh, the technology relies on um, on a new HTTP 1.1 standard feature, which is called uh, the get range request, which allows to retrieve uh, a piece of file, only a subset of the pile of, uh, file, a part of the file, only a few bytes from a file, um, directly with HTTP request. And so good things about this file format is that uh, GDAL is, is able to uh, read uh, and write this file. So when would you use the, the COG format? Well, um, it's relevant if you have a lot of raster that you want to store and uh, you want to share among a, a people uh, and you don't want to care about infrastructure. You don't want to have to install a server. You don't want uh, to care about uh, backup, uh, redundancy, the kind of things. So you go to your favorite cloud provider and you ask uh, for what we call object cloud storage. And um, maybe normally it will help you reduce the storage cost and the infrastructure cost. It's also relevant, relevant if you want to retrieve only a subset of your raster, meaning that you want to, you have, a, uh, for instance, a, a, a raster with 13 bands and you want to access only a few bands, uh, or if you want to access only uh, an extent inside the image. And it's also interesting if you want to access raw data, meaning that there is other standard uh, to deal with uh, already rendered tile like uh, WMS or TMS. But uh, in the case of COG, it's really interesting if you want to access your raw uh, satellite image data, for instance. Just a few comparison. Well, COG, it's like uh, TMS, uh, but with raw data, uh, meaning TMS is already tiled, but it's in several files. Uh, for those who know TMS, here it's only in one file and you can store uh, raw data. And it's like also uh, a w WCS uh, without server. WCS web coverage service is a standard that allows to stream um, uh, raw data uh, through uh, HTTP connection but you have to install a server and you have to upgrade it, maintain it. You have to provide some resources like superior memory. Here in the case of COG, you don't have to have uh, any server or any software solution. Instead, you have to have uh, an HTTP server uh, which support the, the feature get range request. How it works? Well, uh, to make it work, you have to first generate a coke file. Uh, so you're going to take your raster image and you're going to use the JDA translate command with the with the option dash uh, of cog. And then when you have 
generated your COG file, you're going to push uh, to the class using um, either a specific API, API or a, a web interface specific to your, uh, to your cloud providers. Uh, a little words about the, a little word about the, the cloud. Uh, so the technology beyond the, the everything is object storage. Object storage is um, allows to uh, store and fetch file uh, using uh, HTTP GET and POST request using URL. So it's like a, a remote um, document uh, file server. Uh, and you're going to access to your file using GET and POST request. So all the famous uh, cloud providers provide object storage, like Amazon, Google, or Azure. For instance, Amazon S3, for those who knows, uh, is uh, an object storage service. And of course, there is a, an open source solution, which is called OpenStack. Um, and there is several cloud providers that uh, propose the, this technology. Uh, OVH is one, for instance, but I don't know if it is well known um, outside of France. And the good things about OpenStack is that it's um, if one day you want to switch from one cloud provider to another, well, it's and it use OpenStack. Well, it will be um, costless because you can keep your uh, all your script or your uh, screw related to you to the API. Everything will work when we switch to a cloud using OpenStack to another cloud using OpenStack. Uh, it's not the case for Amazon, Google, and Azure because they have their own API. So it's not standard at all, but it's interesting to know this. So let's try it. So now I'm going to describe how to make a quick setup about an infrastructure using COG. Uh, and then I will make a little demonstration with those technology um, uh, directly on my computer. Uh, so yes, I don't, I didn't want, uh, I don't uh, want to make the, the presentation, the demonstration using a real cloud because of uh, a network bandwidth connection issue. So I install a tiny cloud object storage uh, on my uh, laptop using uh, a piece of software, which is called Manayo. And Manayo is uh, open source and it mimic uh, the Amazon S3 API. And so it will be like if I was, it will be exactly the same if I was on, um, on Amazon S3. Uh, so, now uh, I will install it. I'm just gonna run a container using Docker. I'm not gonna get. Uh, I'm not gonna give any details about the command line. If you have any questions or specific details, uh, please ask me maybe after the presentation. So just it's just one way to have a cloud object storage uh, on your laptop quite uh, quickly with just one command. So once once you have installed uh, your cloud. Uh, provider on your laptop. I'm going to generate the cog. Uh, I take an example with a Sentinel-2 LA image, uh, which has a 20 meter resolution. And so it's the things with uh, Sentinel-2 product is that they have um, one file per band. All the, there is a, all the bands are separated and they are uh, in, uh, in separate file. And so I want to, to to make a good example, uh, I'm going to merge those bands uh, using the, the JDAL merge uh, uh, Python script. And so I'm going to merge those files into only one file. Uh, so there is 13 bands, and uh, it weights uh, uh, at the beginning of uh, around 400 megabytes. And after the merge, it weights uh, around uh, 90, uh, 900 megabytes. Uh, it's because the Sentinel-2 are, um, are using the JPEG 2000 lowest compression, which is quite effective. And so JDAL is not able to write a uh, JPEG 2000 file. Uh, so I didn't want to lose uh, any uh, image quality. So I decided to not use any compression at all. So that's why uh, the, the the resulting file is uh, much bigger than the or original ones. 
once I have my uh, only one file, now I'm going to generate Kog and I'm going to use the JEDA translate command, like I told you before, with the option uh, dash of Kog. After the generation, you see that the file is even bigger than before. Uh, it's because uh, mostly uh, JEDA Translate had added overview to my overviews to my image in order to speed up the visualization with uh, with different level of uh, resolution. Once I generated the Coke file, I'm gonna upload it on my NIO. I'll show you. I will show you this uh, later. And then I will just open my QGIS and add a raster with the specific protocol Amazon S3. Uh, just a little uh, information uh, is that you have to specific few environment variable uh, in order to make understand uh, JEDAL and so QGIS that we are not targeting the the classic uh, Amazon S3 uh, environment uh, server, but we are targeting a server which is uh, in locally in my machine. So you can see here the S3 endpoint uh, is a local IP. It's the IP of my IO on my machine. So Jess, yes, I'm gonna do then uh, show you a, demonst a demonstration of the how it works. So I'm gonna switch. Uh, share. I'm going to switch uh, the screen and screen one. So yes, here you see the Manayo interface. So this is the web interface I talk uh, I talk uh, before in my in my presentation. And uh, so there is different tools and uh, and and different items. I'm not going to uh, talk about this, but I'm just going to show you how, um, how it is in the object browser. So the ob object browsers gather all the files which are stored in your cloud, um, and it's separated. It's the same in, uh, in Amazon S3, and I think it's the same also in other uh, cloud uh, providers. You have bucket. A bucket is just um, a set of file, uh, a whole set of file, and uh, inside this bucket, you're gonna have different file, and so you can put your file in different folder, different directory. Uh, you can as if it was a classic file system, and so you see here that I've already generated and pushed my cognitive because it takes a little bit of time. Yeah, I wanted to uh, to earn a, a bit of time. So here you can see my Cogtiff already stored uh, on my uh, Manio browser. Now I'm just gonna start QGIS. So just I already set up my environment, seeing there that the IP address is the one uh, pointing, targeting uh, to my local Minio installation. The Docker run is uh, here, and you see that the IP address is here, the IP of the console. Now that uh, every environment variable, variable has been set, I'm going to start QGIS. And I'm going to add um, the raster directly in my QGIS project in order to visualize it. So I'm just going to click like if I was adding a classic raster, I'm going to change to uh, oh, maybe I could I'm just going to switch in English, maybe would be better than in French. And so I'm adding a raster, a change from protocol to use the HTTPS Cloud One. The type is the Amazon One, AWS S3. The bucket or container, I call it my bucket. And the object key is the one that you see here, 
is the name of the file. Oh. Yes, and that's it. And so I add it. And so here you can see the cock file visualized in QGIS. And uh, here I'm seeing an overview, but I, I'm, I can just zoom to the most uh, precise resolution. And every time I navigate in the, in the image, every time I move, uh, QGIS is retrieving the image um, uh, directly from the HTTP ser server, is only getting only the piece of information that he missed. Just here, what is interesting here is that normally it's more uh, quick, it's more speed, it's more fluid, but I think this is uh, my PC have difficulties uh, while running uh, QGIS and um, and the, the visual conference, the, the stream, uh, stream yard. So just here I'm browsing and every time I browse, QGIS is only downloading the piece of information that it needs meaning the three band one, two, three, and uh, the only information that you need to cover the extent, the correct viewport. So that's the good things. It's that I have a 1.3 one gigabyte file stored on the server, but I'm only retrieving a tiny piece of information that I need to just visualize it on my screen. Then I can switch from band one to three to other band like four, uh, five, six, for instance. And so it's going to refresh and it's going to download. Uh, so only uh, the data needed to uh, cover my viewport. And so now I'm going. I'm, I'm currently seeing the band four, five, six. Another cool thing is. I can use the raster calculator to make a computation about the band and just display then in the viewport in the in the in the map area. So here I'm going to compute what we call an NDVI index for those who knows. Uh, so if I remember correctly, the formula something like that, and uh, divided by um, eight plus four. And that's it. So I'm going to create the on the fly the raster. I'm going to give it a name and DBI. OK. And so I have a new raster. Um, so the raster is computed according to two bands. So QGIS is going to download the data that it needs from these two bands, and it's going to make the computation on the on client side. So NDVI index for the information, it's um, it measures the quantity of vegetation for one pixel. So the brighter the pixel, the most likely it is a vegetation pixel. So there is good chance here that these are vegetation. And so, yeah, the good things about this is that you can make your analysis, choose the band that you want. You make a different computation. Uh, 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 based on different bunch, and still you don't have to download all the image and make the processing on the other image. You can just make it on the fly uh, on client side. Um, and so that's it, I think, for the presentation, uh, for the demonstration. I'm going to switch back uh, to uh, to my presentation. Yes. Just uh, before ending, a few limitations that you have to be aware of is that obviously the performance, the fluidity when you brought the file, when you navigate in the file, will depend uh, on the number of bands that you have selected. Uh, if you select one band, it will be uh, quicker, uh, more f f more fluid than if you want. If you select, uh, I don't know, five, six bands. Uh, depend also in the data type, meaning the number of bytes used to code one pixel. Uh, if it is on uh, 8 bits, 16-bit, uh, or 64-bit, uh, uh, well, it matters. 
Uh, well, obviously, it also depends on your bandwidth network connection. Um, it's something to be to be careful with before uh, switching completely to um, to a Koga solution. And last one, but it's not really true. I think uh, it's your cloud provider, but normally the cloud provider have good, really good bandwidth network connection. But so there is more chance. Uh, it's more likely that the limitation will be on your side than than uh, in in on their side. And just a comment about uh, processing. You have to be careful uh, because uh, there is uh, for the processing that doesn't have uh, any extend parameters. Well, it will download all the image. Meaning, if I try to start a GDAL contour on this image, it will download the one dot three gigabytes, uh, and it will then start the GDAL contour process. Uh, so you you have to be careful with this and one solution if you want to just run jedal contour on this part of the image is you can use uh, the clip raster by extent before just to extract the piece of information of raster that you want and gen then you start your processing on this and so that's it uh, that's it for my uh, presentation if you have any question uh, i will be glad to to answer it Okay, thanks a lot. Fascinating. That's that's wonderful stuff. Um, so yeah, we've got a bunch of questions here. Um, so so the one that a uh, few people are upvoting is uh, how is the performance uh, latency of Cog when hosting large amounts of raster data on an S3 object storage compared to server-based solutions? Um, huh. Are the um... I really don't know how to answer this question. I think it will depend, uh, obviously, on the uh, on the server. I would say that if I have to take a bet, I would say that Amazon will be better in any case because they have really good network bandwidth. And it works. It's uh, the most famous one, the S3 object storage. So if I had to take a bet, I will bet on Amazon yeah. compared to any server storage. OK. Um, somewhat related, uh, is it practical fast enough to access COGS from a web map like Open Layers to support users zooming and panning around the map? Yes, yes. I, I'm not. I'm not really a web guy, but uh, I'm, I'm. I'm. I just. I believe. I can. I'm pretty sure that there is already a piece of code that allows you to uh, to load and to visualize COG directly uh, from Open Layers. I'm, I'm pretty sure I've already seen example so it works out of the box normally yeah okay uh, is there an optimal excuse me is there an optimal size for a cog file how large is too large well it depends on your files uh, i made few example uh, few tests on the playyard and the playyard files are already really really huge and really really large at the beginning i think this is uh, one gigabyte for so at, at the beginning or maybe more. So the the larger your file your uh, is your original file. When you translate to Coke, it's a little bit uh, bigger uh, because of a view and because sometimes of the compression, which is a little bit less effective compared to JPEG 2000, for instance. Um, so yes, it's a little bit bigger, but it's you uh, it. it you have to, if you're planning to use this kind of technology, you have to make the trade-off between uh, the you, the total amount of files, the size uh, that you are uh, you, that you need to store all your files, and the cost, what it costs, because it's not really that um, expensive, and so you can store really huge file, and it's not that much expensive. Right. Um... Which, so yeah, I mean, there, somebody actually asked the question, what are the rough costs for storage and transfer when you're using an approach like this? Uh, it depends. Uh, yes. it, it depends about the cloud providers. Uh, some cloud providers uh, are, not, um, are not making you pay for the, the put, the, the upload, but you're paying uh, each time that you request. Most of the time, you pay each time that you request a piece of the data. Uh, and I, I don't remember the number, so I'm going to not 
telling you any numbers, but you pay, most of the time you pay every time you get a piece of the file and you don't really pay for, if I remember correctly, for the amount of size that you, um, that you occupy, that your, the, that your storage needs. You pay when you get. So, yeah. but I have no numbers. You have to check out <laughs> and it differs from cloud providers to another. The pricing is really different. If you go from Amazon to cloud, to Google, to Azure, uh, I, I made some tests with OVH. It was uh, also different. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then one more here. Uh, do raster styles like Hillshade or Contour work with remote cogs, I guess, in QGIS? And I'm going to guess the answer is yes after watching that NDVI calculate on the fly. Yes, if it is, uh, yes, the Hillshade should work. I think so. I'm not really, uh, I, I will have to check. I'm pretty sure the Hillshade is the, it could be done on the fly. Uh, not sure for the rest of the processing. Not sure. Needs to be checked. You you can make the test quite easily. You put your file on a on a server, on a cloud server, and you try to to start the the processing or the rendering. If it if it is quite uh, if it is um, almost immediate, if, yeah, yeah, well, it, it means that it works. If it if it looks like it's downloading all the picture and it takes too much time, well, it's it's not really working and it's downloading all the image. Yeah. OK, well, that, that's great. Is there anything else uh, you want to share with us before we? No, thank you to, okay. to listen to my presentation. And uh, if you have any other question, uh, don't hesitate to email me or, or ping me on Twitter or anything. I will be uh, glad to answer it if I have the answer, of course. <laughs> OK, awesome. Well, thanks a lot, Julian. Much appreciated. That was a really great talk. And yeah, well, uh, yeah, thanks again. Thank you, John. Thank you, guys. Bye. Okay, see you.